can't argue with the relentless march of technology but you can maybe if some of the apps it is from the past few decades here we round up a bunch of facts and under that some so ridiculous you'll question their authenticity so in this video we are going to know true facts about technology changing fonts can share printer ink that's right fonts are not created equal people create different kinds of fonts for all kinds of reasons to convey a message for decoration or has iconography the theory is if you use a lighter font you'll use slightly less ink per page based on the assumption that you are only printing with inkjet printers that use all style catch jazz you'll likely save about 10% of ink by switching to one of the lighter fonts of course the flip side to this argument is that as a home consumer you'll never print enough volumes to actually see a bench fit Email existed before the World Wide Web. You probably don't even think before composing a one-line email message and sending it. But it wasn't always so easy. There's an interesting clip on YouTube, How to Send an Email Database 1984. This was from a Czech TV show called Database and the presenters demonstrated what it took to actually send an email back in those days. You had to use a computer and rotary telephone to connect to a service called Micronet. This was pre-HTTP, so there were no URLs, just number web page of our emails. The web page number was triple seven six. Wikipedia needs an army of anti-vanguard bots. Wikipedia's mission is to make knowledge freely available to anyone with access to the internet. However, anyone with internet can also sign up and edit pages, which results in what they call vandalism. There is a very robust moderation system, but there is only so much that a person can do. in terms of actually monitoring changes and correcting changes that one does make that's where the bots essential computer programs coming the bots like clue bot and g keep a track of all changes made to any page and instantly revert back to the correct version if a vandal decides to change things about 1041 bots are authorized for use on the 38 million wikipedia pages at loss count 92% of the world currency is digital This means that most of the money you earn transact with used to buy goods and services or on exist only on computers and hard drives. Only an estimated 10% of the currency globally is physical money. All the black money piles come from within this 8%. This is a fair estimate that economists seem to agree on though. Not an exact figure. This low percent seems absurd but when you stop to think, it makes sense considering that most large transactions are done electronically anyway. Bank stores electronically too and the 92% includes all kinds of transaction done using credit debit cards and wire transfers might be a good idea to revisit all those hackers movies where a nerdy computer hacker manages to see from billions off in a just few minutes domain name registration was free till 1995 nobody really knew what the internet was capable of back and then and this was a huge opportunity for people to own all kinds of domain names It was in 1995 that a company called Network Solutions was granted the rights to charge people for domain names, and it was expensive too. Prices typically started at $100 per two years of registration. As much as 30% of this was a fee that went to the National Science Foundation to create an Internet Intellectual Infrastructure Fund. This fee was later reversed in 1997, bringing the charge down to $70 for two years. The original Tron was notable for cheating. Gibbs will know the movie Tron, starring Jeff Bridges. Bridges plays Kevin Flynn, a software engineer who gets digitized and downloaded into cyberspace when he interacts with other computer programs. There was a recent remake of this sci-fi classic that was very well received, again starring Jeff Bridges and digitally altered, much younger version of him. However, the original movie was notable by the Oscars in 1982. because the academy thought they cheated by using digital effects in 1956 five megabytes of data were returned it was 1956 when ibm launched ramac the first computer with something like a hard drive that we use today by hard drive we mean something that used a magnet disk a moving head was used to access and write that data at the time it was considered a massive leap in mass storage technology because it signified a shift from punch cards and magnet tape to randomly accessible hard drives Ramek itself show for random access method of accounting and control. The whole cabinet weighed over 1000 kg and the 5 MB charger was spread over 50 huge aluminum disks coated with magnetic iron oxide 
the disk rotated at a speed of 200 rpm and the machines were leased for $3,200 per month back in that day. The XY position indicator for displays occurred the mouse. When the first pointing device was invented in the early 60s by Douglas Engelbert and Bell English, it was called the XY position indicator for display systems. It was first used with the Xerox Alto computer and the demo started in 1968 by Engelbert in what is called the mother of all demos. In 1968, Engelbert showed off word processing, graphics, windows, file linking and control using a mouse. All these things made their way into modern computers. Engelbert was also responsible for the name mouse, coined simply because the cable sticking out the end of the device reminding him of a rod and stale. Russia built a computer that ran on watch in 1936. Before the mini authorization of transistors, computers had a much more visible system of counting. Things like gears, pivots, bits and levers were often used and they needed some sort of power source to function. Vladimir Lukianov built something like this in 1936, but he used water to create a computer that solved partial differential equations. In images of the Lukianov computer, you will see a complex system of interconnected tubes filled with water. Adjusting tabs and plugs alter the flow of water, while the end result was seen by measuring the level of water in certain tubes. It was also called a water integrator and was originally designed to solve the problem of cracking in concrete. It is now found in Moscow's Polytechnic Museum. A 15 year old with a PC hack on NASA in 1999. Oh my god! Between August and October of 1999, Jonathan James used his skills as a hacker to intercept data from the Defense Threat Reduction Agency or DTRA. He had access to over 3,000 messages, usernames, and passwords of DTRA employees. He also obtained source code for the International Space Station. NASA was forced to shut down computers for three weeks to fix the problem at an estimated cost of $41,000. He was ultimately sentenced when he was 16. But it just goes to show what a 15-year-old in South Florida sitting with a computer and the right set of skills can do. Thanks guys for watching this video. I'll be back with the next one.